This is Steve Juin for MMA Mania. This interview with the Wolf Darian Caldwell was recorded on July 13, 2016, before his main event fight with the juggernaut Joe Timanglo at the Kansas Star Arena in Mulvane, Kansas, Bellator 159, Caldwell vs. Timanglo, live on Spike TV. Here's our interview with Darian Caldwell. Steve Juin, MMA Mania. Okay, Darren, you're now on the line with Steve Jewin of MMA Mania. Go ahead, Steve. Mr. Caldwell, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, man. What's up, bud? I'm feeling just fantastic. I'm having a great day interviewing great fighters, and I've got to imagine you're also pleased because last time we talked, the Bantamweight title was up in the air between Dantas and Galvo, who never seemed to be able to get on the same page at the same time. Now that that's done, the path is clear for you moving forward. Yes, sir. It's about that time. We're closing the gap. So this win over Joe Tamanglo, if you get it, puts you straight in line to face Eduardo Dantas. So how are you feeling about Tamanglo as an opponent? I think I think Joe is a worthy opponent. I think he's trying to fight. I think he's trying to uh, right to fight me. I think uh, he's not going to get ahead. I think he's going to come out there and scrap. So uh, I'm definitely not looking past this guy. I'm definitely uh, looking forward to a, to a good fight. But, uh He's got five knockouts on his record, 11 submissions. Which do you figure is the more dangerous aspect of his game as you analyze the fight? Uh, well, uh, I just feel like the toughness in this match is more anything. So, um, I don't think he's going to be able to knock me out. I don't think he's going to be able to submit me. I, I just feel like uh, he's going to be tough uh, I'm not really worried about getting knocked out or submitted. I'm going out there and get this point and finish the job. Well, you certainly don't have anything to worry about going so far in your career. I mean, you're undefeated, so nobody's put a hand on you, and Joe Warren certainly didn't when you fought him. So you got every reason to be confident right now. Thank hey, you, man. I appreciate that. You know, I'm going in here real confident, you know. I don't do every fight, you know. Uh, uh, a lot of it can mention, you know, some people lose. You know, off of that soul pack, you know, and uh, I just, I just can't uh, be that guy that uh, is scared before anything happens. You know? I'm very ready. I'm very prepared. You know. So. You had strong words for both Dantas and Galvo before they finally had their fight, settled their difference, and Dantas took the title from Galvo. But which one would you have preferred to face? I said, I said, I said, I said, Edgar, they're both vaginas. That's pretty similar to what he said the last time around, but now that Dante says the title, do you think more or less of him at this point? Uh, I think the same. I think they're both still uh, a little soft in that area, you know. Um, I think uh, um, sometimes for me to get a fight any of them, uh, I'm just going to show exactly why I said what I said, you know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man of my word, so. How has the camp been treating you? How is the weight coming off for the fight? How is the preparation overall? Ken's good, man. Uh, preparation is great. And my weight's even better, you know. Uh, I don't ever really have issues with, with those aspects, you know. Um, I feel like every fight I go into, you know, I'm doing the right thing to make sure I'm, I'm going to get my hand raised from the night of the fight. So and everything's going as planned, you know. That's good to hear. Now, I talked already earlier today to a fighter from this same car, Dave Rickles, and he told me they're doing early morning weigh-ins in Mulvane as opposed to the afternoon step on the scale and have to make your last cut right before you get on the scale. So are you looking forward to that? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, that, that, that's something for the fighters. You know, be able to hydrate, you know, and feel good going back into the fight even better, you know. Yeah, uh, it's always cool, you know. Um, You've seen a lot more entertaining fights when, when that happens, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of us train, you know, 15, 20 pounds, uh, more than what, what we weigh at, weighing at, you know, and sometimes you don't really ever get to gain that weight back for 24 hours, you know, so I, I feel like, uh, uh if it's, you know, with a little bit more time, we'll be able to, uh, get to it. Get to the point where that's how we were feeling when we were training. So, so that's fun out there. And I think it's also good for fighter health as well because if you're properly rehydrated, it helps with your overall condition and 
gets you less prone to taking injuries when you're in a fight. Not that you've had any injuries, but again, you know, it's it's a good thing. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, you, you get you get it feeling good. You feel great, you know. Uh, and so that that's what I'm that's what I'm most looking forward to. You know, is seeing how exactly how good I'm feeling. How uh, put a little bit more weight on. So. You said Showtime Anglo is a worthy opponent, and you're looking forward to facing him. And obviously, you're looking forward to eventually all things going well, getting the title shot. But who else do you see as worthy competitors for you besides the champion and the current man you're facing? You know, uh, obviously, you know, there's guys out there that uh, they got my, there's Mike Richardson. You know, he lost to Dante, but. Well, he's a tough fighter, you know. He poses a lot of threats in different areas. Uh, and Styles make matchups, you know. Um, there, there's us, uh, you Davis, you know. There's, uh, uh, you know. Um, Styles has got some great fighters at 35. And, uh, but eventually I'm going to clear that division out. And then I have to bring a new guy. That does seem like a possibility at this point with you being undefeated in Bellator and undefeated overall. So would you turn down rematches with anybody you've already faced if it gets to that point? Uh, not really. But I like it uh, because there's a lot more fighters than just a rematch, you know. Uh, so, uh, just, just like Kimba, you know, I'm a money fight, you know. I want that to this division out. Uh, it's going to be about the money, you know. It's going to be about, you know, fighting guys who who people want to see me fight, you know. If they want to see me fight a rematch, then that, that, that's just got to be it, you know. But I doubt after, you know, I, I ripped through these guys the way I'm going to, guys are going to want to see a rematch. So. That's true. Now, somebody else has used the phrase, I'm a money fighter, when I've talked to him, and that's King Mo Lawal. And he used that to describe the difference between fighting at light heavyweight and fighting at heavyweight. And he said, I'm a money fighter, I'm a money weight, I'll fight at any weight. So, would you say you're money in that yeah. way, too, that if they offered you a fight at a higher weight class, you'd take it? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I believe I can go in there and prepare for any one single fighter and, and get a job done. So, um, whether it's 10 pounds heavier or whatever maybe. Mm -hmm. So then we could end up seeing a super fight somewhere down the road. You become the Bantamweight champion. Daniel Strauss is still the featherweight champion. Maybe that's a fight that gets made. One more time, please. Oh, I said that if you win the title, you know, going down the road, you beat Joe Timanglo, you beat Dantas, and then Daniel Strauss is still the champion. Maybe that's a super fight. Being in the featherweight, I mean, featherweight and bandweight. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a fight people want to see, you know? And uh, Daniel's a great fight. And, and, and what better fighter um, to showcase my skills on than, than the champ above my weight class? Absolutely. I'd love that fight. Yeah, I think that's a worthy fight. I'm not trying to get Bellator ideas, but if they go with it, then uh, so be it. Yeah, uh, no, for sure. I think eventually, I think eventually everybody's gonna cross paths. You know, um, you see it with, with Joe. You know, he fought guys like Georgie Karakarian and Pitbull. You know, and now he's fighting guys like myself. You know, um, so um, it's not out of the question. You know, and I'm not calling anybody out by any means. But I think uh, eventually, you know, once I clear out the division, it's like who else is there? You know. Where I have no choice, no choice. You've talked about how Joe Timanglo is a is a tough guy. He's a guy that's durable in a fight. But do you think that means the fight's going the distance, or are you predicting you might go in there and get a finish quick? Yeah, I'm gonna go out there and finish him in three minutes. I give him three minutes, and if he if he uh goes past three minutes, then I'll be surprised. Well, that's going to make for a short night in the main event. So do you have something planned? Are you going to do a backflip off the cage afterward? Yeah, of course. I always got something planned. But make sure you don't go to the bathroom or go, go to concession stands. Because before you come back, it might be over, you know? Right. No. Nobody blink. Nobody uh, leave. Nobody I, get I would hate. I would hate for you to miss the, <laughs> I would hate for you to miss, miss, the, miss the main event because you wanted to grab a beer. So make sure you grab it during the earlier fight. 
Absolutely. Yeah, get it in the commercial break or get it in the prelims, wherever you have to do it. Get it before the main event takes place because you're not going to want to miss Darian Caldwell <laughs> at Showtime Anglo by any stretch. So let me go ahead and get some plugs from you. I always like to do that before we wrap up an interview. Who do you want to shout out and who do you want to promote? I'd like to thank Bad Boy Brands, American SNL, Pinnacle MMA, Power MMA, uh, Active Life Wellness Chiropractic, um, my family and friends and, you know, everyone who supports me, even people that don't support me, you know, um, uh, I just wish everyone the best, um, but, uh, yeah, man, follow me on, on whatever social media, Twitter or, uh, Instagram at the Wolf MMA. You know, a lot of fighters say that the haters just make them stronger and they kind of get the feeling you're feeling that way too, that if people doubt you, that just makes you even better. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Indeed. So hate all you want, but the Wolf Dairy Caldwell is here to stay, and I always appreciate the time. Thank you so much for the interview today. I appreciate you, man. No problem. I'm glad to do it. And Dan, thanks for setting it up.